Today is June 27th, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. On June 27th, 1939, one of the most famous scenes in movie history is filmed. Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara parting in Gone with the Wind. Director Victor Fleming also shot the scene using the alternative line, frankly, my dear, I don't care, in case the film's censors objected to the word damn. The censors approved the movie, but fined producer David O. Selnick $5,000 for including the curse. Back then, that was quite a bit of money. The filming of the famous epic was itself an epic with two and a half years elapsing between Selnick's purchase of the rights to Margaret Mitchum's novel and the movie's debut in Atlanta in December 1939. While the film eventually garnered many awards, it has also drawn criticism for its romanticism of antebellum South and the whitewashing of the horrors of slavery. Filming began on December 10th, 1938, with the burning of Atlanta scene. Although O'Hara still hadn't been cast, British actor, actress Vivian Lee, newly arrived from London, dropped by the set to visit her agent, Myron Selznick, Brother of producer, David O. Selznick asked her to test for O'Hara. In January, Lee signed on. Clark Gable, Olivia de Havilland, Leslie Howard, and Hattie McDaniels also starred. McDaniels, who played Mammy, the Terra Plantation House servant and formerly enslaved woman, became the first African-American actor to win an Oscar for her performance. A factory storekeeper in Nazara Township of Sudan becomes ill on June 27, 1976. Five days later, he dies. And the world's first recorded Ebola virus epidemic begins making its way through the area. By the time the ep epidemic is over, 284 cases are reported, with about half of the victims dying from the disease. Symptoms of Ebola hemorrhagic fever generally begin about 4 to 15 days after the person is infected with the virus. The average victim will first notice flu-like symptoms, such as high fever, aching, and general weakness. Usually this is followed by diarrhea, vomiting, and eruptions of rash all over the body. Then the person may begin bleeding from any and all body orifices and eternal organ damage begins. Within seven to 10 days, exhaustion, dehydration, and shock set in. After the storekeeper in Zara died. A second man in the town died on July 6th. His brother became sick soon after but managed to recover. The brother's co-worker went to the hospital on July 12th with symptoms and was dead two days later. The co-worker's wife died five days after that. A week later, a male neighbor died. Eventually, another 48 infections and 27 deaths were tracked back to the neighborhood. Given the pattern of the infection, the fact that the hospital workers also started to develop symptoms, doctors realized that transmission of the virus required only close contact. At Meridai Hospital in southern Sudan, 33 of the 61 nurses ended up dead from the Ebola fever. The World Health Organization finally arrived in October to help to contain the 
epidemic. Once it became clear that isolating the victims would stop the spread, the, ep the epidemic ended almost as quickly as it had appeared. There have been a handful of other Ebola outbreaks in the years since 1976, including the one in 2014 that resulted in over 11,000 deaths, mostly in West Africa. Now I'd like to bring you yet another This Day in History. After 59 years, the iconic Route 66 enters a realm of history on June 27, 1985, when the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Official decertifies the road and votes to remove all the highway signs. Measuring some 2,200 miles in its heyday, Route 66 stretched from Chicago, Illinois to Santa Monica, California, passing through eight states. According to a New York Times article about its decertification, most of Route 66 followed a path through the wilderness forged in 1857 by U.S. Navy Lieutenant Edward Bill at the head of, the, of a caravan of camels. Over the years, wagon trails and cattlemen eventually made way for trucks and passenger automobiles. The idea of building a highway along this route surfaced in Oklahoma in the mid-1920s as a way to link the state to cities like Chicago and Los Angeles. Highway Commissioner Cyrus S. Avery touted it as a way of diverting traffic from Kansas City, Missouri to Denver. In 1926, the highway earned its official designation as Route 66. The diagonal course of Route 66 linked hundreds of mostly rural communities to the cities along its route allowing farmers to more easily transport grain and other types of produce for distribution. The highway also a lifeline for a long distance trucking industry, which by the thirties was competing with the railroad for dominance in shipping in the shipping market. Route 66 was the scene of mass westward immigration during the 1930s when more than 200,000 people traveled from the poverty-stricken Dust Bowl to California. John Steinbeck's immortalized the highway, which he called the Mother Road, in his classic 1939 novel, The Grapes of Wrath. Beginning in, 19, in the 1950s, the building of the massive system of intense highways made older roads increasingly obsolete and by 1970, modern four-lane highways and bypassed nearly all sections of Route 66. In October of 1984, Interstate 40 bypassed the last original stretch of Route 66 at Williams, Arizona. And the following year, the road was decertified. According to the National Historic Route 66 Federation, Drivers can still use 85% of the road, and Route 66 has become a destination for tourists from all over the world. Often called the Main Street of America, Route 66 began, became a pop culture mainstay over the years, inspiring its own song written in 1947 by Bobby Troop, Route 66 was later re-recorded re by artists as varied as Nat King Cole, Chuck Berry, and the Rolling Stones, as well as a 1960s television series. The historic highway was featured prominently in the hit animation film, Cars, 2006. I wanna thank you for watching today and as always, stay safe and stay blessed. And remember to smile because I love you. But more importantly, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you the most. 
And that's the best love that you can have. And if you like the content of this video, please give it a and go over and check out some of my other videos. Also comment down below, that really helps. And what really helps is if you subscribe. Yes, come on over and be a serendipity subby. All right, everybody, have a blessed day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everybody.